Here's a high level architecture um, of what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to use Azure Event Hubs to receive the streaming data. From there, it can go directly to Azure Blob Storage File Storage, aka Data Lake. And I'll also show you from there, we'll set up an Azure Stream Analytics job. It's going to take one input from the Event Hub, and it's going to have two outputs, one directly to a Power BI real-time dashboard, and the other output to Azure SQL Database. That you see this arrow going here too. You could also set up some criteria in this job to only just take a portion of this data and write it back to blob storage. This other arrow here would be sending everything to blob storage. So this allows you to do some filtering, uh, put some select, uh, some SQL statements on it to filter what goes to blob storage. So that's what we're going to talk about. So these are the steps. We're going to create or use an existing resource group. We're going to create an event hub namespace. And then within that namespace, we're going to create an event hub. You could have many event hubs or topics uh, within a namespace. Then we're going to create an Azure Stream Analytics job. And then we're going to connect it all together. So here we go. Hit the little hamburger menu top left and uh, click Create Resource. By the way, we're in uh, the Azure portal. Just go to portal.azure.com to get here. We want to create an event hub first. So just type in event hub or event hubs, search on that term, and then you're going to see uh, this uh, offering. So create the event hub, and it doesn't really need much information. Let's call it Kirby's demo. It's going to tell us if that if it likes that name or not. You get the little green check mark, so everything's good. I would suggest don't go with the basic just for this demo. Do the standard. It allows you to do what we call data capture and send data directly to Azure Storage. Um, don't worry about making it redundant right now. Pick your subscription that you're in. Um, now here's uh, th the thing about resource groups. You might have an existing resource group already. Let me show you, show you, what, the, you what that looks like. You can just pick one like BOD or Databricks or something like that. Just it, This is just a name that you make up. But think of resource groups as file folders. Just nice logical way of uh, grouping things together. So go ahead and set that up. And then your event, This what this does is it doesn't create an event hub it creates an event hub namespace. And then from within that, you're going to create event hubs. Okay, let's just uh, assume that was uh, being created. I'm going to cancel my changes there. I already have one set up, so I'll show you that in a minute. Next, let's do an Azure uh, Stream Analytics job. Should give us an option, Azure Stream Analytics job. There it is right there. Create one of these, very similar to the last, um, uh, when we set up the Event Hub namespace. Just go ahead, pick your region, um, and then you're uh, ready to go with that job. So go ahead and create that. Okay, so I've already pre-provisioned those. So as you can see, I have a resource group here on my dashboard in Azure where I've got everything I need within it. It makes it really easy uh, to find the things that you're working on. So let's first go into the Event Hub namespace that we created. You're going to see the Overview tab here. Um, we're going to uh, look at the shared access policies in a minute, but uh, more importantly, here's your Event Hubs. You're going to need to create at least one event hub. So I have one created here, but it's pretty simple. Just click create, give it a name. And then how many partitions? It's going to default to one. This just, if you have just a lot of data and you want to be able to distribute that across a, a, a large compute area, then you can increase that to like 32. It just allows better parallel processing. Just leave it for one right now, and then this is the event uh, uh, message retention time period between one and seven. And then lastly, capture on. This is in the diagram I showed you could directly stream all that data coming into your event hub to Azure Storage. If you click this, then it's going to ask you about your storage account, a container that you made. You're going to set this up. And also the file folder, the naming convention of your files that get dumped into Azure uh, uh, Blob Storage, 
that's how you set up data capture. Okay, so let's go back here because I already have one set up. It's right here. If I click on this, you'll see the properties of this particular event hub. I'll kind of show you the activity going on in that event hub. Okay, that's great. We've set up this event hub, but how do we stream data to it? You need to know two things. The name of your event hub, which is Kirby's event hub, but also go back up here to that event hub namespace uh, that we created. Okay, so what we need to do is go underneath settings and go to shared access policies. This is where we're going to get the connection string to be able to stream to this uh, um, to this uh, namespace and in particular the event hub within the namespace. So I had already created one called new policy. By default, you have 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 one out there already. Let's go to new policy, and what you're going to see you're going to see the connection string primary. You have a primary and a secondary. doesn't really matter which one you use. Click that to copy that. You're going to need that. Save that in a, in a text file somewhere. You're going to need that to put into your program so that your program that's emitting the streaming data knows how to find this event hub namespace and the event hub. So that's key there. Two things, this connection string and also the event hub name which we can find once again just by clicking Event Hub. So just understand that an Event Hub namespace is a higher level grouping of many different event hubs. Okay, quick question. Are we having fun yet? I hope we are. So let's go into our stream analytics job. Once again, here's my resource group with the three things we've created so far, an Event Hub namespace, an Event Hub, and there is our stream analytics job. Let's jump in there. And when you go to the overview tab, it's going to show you what's going on here. We have one input, which is our event hub, and two outputs. We have a, a SQL database in Azure, and we have a Power BI uh, dashboard that we're feeding. So then this query in the middle, this is what glues this together with this. This query connects the inputs to the outputs. How does it do it? Let's look at the first statement here. Uh, just pretend we have some sample car data that's coming into this uh, event hub. We're selecting the make, price, and time of that car data into Azure SQL Database, so this alias here, from this event hub. And then down here, we're making a slightly different selection. We're just selecting make and model into Power BI, this, this alias here, from the same event hub. All right, so what do these aliases mean? So you'd go down to inputs here. First of all, if this was being set up from scratch, you'd just say add stream input. Now, what kind of stream input? Is it IoT Hub? Is it Blob Storage? No, it's Event Hub. That's what we set up. And when you click that, it just prompts you for give it a, a name and then pick it from your subscription. So we've already set that up. We've already set up an Event Hub, so that would be visible to you here when you look at your subscription. So that's the input. Let's look at the output. The output, we're going to add an output. Well, this is a good screen here because it shows you all the different outputs. SQL Database, Cosmos DB, Power BI. So I picked two outputs. One was a SQL Database that I have in Azure, and another one was Power BI. When you go in there, it's just going to prompt you for your subscription, the credentials, and then it set up that link. So we, we're almost there. We have our input, which is the Event Hub, and two outputs. Now let's look at the query. This is what ties everything together. Once again, you've got the select statement that's selecting into your Azure SQL database and another one for Power BI. Now we can't test this just yet because no data is streaming in to the Event Hub, but we have everything set up right now. Uh, we have the Event Hub namespace, the Event Hub, and then this stream analytics job that's tying it all together. So let's get uh, a program set up, a sample program that will stream data to our event hub. Okay, so we need to open up Visual Studio and I'm going to send you a link to a GitHub repo um, that has this solution in it. I am not a .NET person at all, uh, but I use this sample repository and I just had to change a couple things. So up at the top of the program, you're going to see these two strings here, an event hub connection string that you need to supply 
and event hub name. You can see they were uh, blank before. So this is the connection string that we pulled from the event hub namespace. Remember we went into the uh, event hub namespace and went to the shared access signature and pulled out this string. That's what you want to put there. And then here you want the name of the event hub. Okay, so those two things there. Then the only other thing I changed down here was under var message. I made up some uh, JSON uh, data uh, for make of a car, uh, the price, which is just incrementing uh, by one each time that it lo loops through. And the other thing you can change here is this count here, send messages to event hub. It, I think it's defaulted to 100. I, I uh, made it 10,000 just so it could stream for me. So when I start this program, you'll see what it does, but it'll start sending. And once again, this is just a, a sample way to be able to stream data to this event hub that you set up. So you can see, there we go, it's starting to generate data to our event hub. So let's go find it and see what it looks like in our event hub. Okay, so we're back in Azure and we're looking at our stream analytics job. Go to inputs. You're going to see the input. Here's our event hub. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sample data. Click this little sample data icon here and it gives you a, a time range of the data to sample. Just, I don't just say something like the last hour and click sample. And then watch this little bell notification up here. It'll tell you if it's successfully kicked off that sampling. Um, so we are now just sampling data because the job isn't actually running. We're just sampling that data. Now go to query and our query should now work. The query we had before, let's go test query, just sometimes you have to ignore that message. It's refreshing. This query, once again, is doing two select statements from the event hub. And there's our data. So down here on the preview pan, uh, pane, this is the input. This is all the data that's coming in. However, this query for Azure SQL Database is only asking for three columns. So if we click test results, and go ahead and click the test query. It's going to run that and show us the results, which should just be these three columns. We don't want the entire payload coming in. We just want three columns. So we'll give that a second to run. And there it is, three columns, make, price, and time. Now, how about the, that's great for our database, but for a Power BI report, we have a different uh, test set. So we click that or uh, a query. We have just make and model, and there it is there. So understand here's our input and then the two different outputs based on the query that you say uh, have set up here. By the way, you can't if the job's actually running, you can't edit this. But at this point, if we were all ready to go, we'd go to overview uh, up top and we can click our start button. And that would actually start this job running, uh, the stream analytics job which would start pulling from our event, hub, our event hub and then streaming out to our uh, SQL database and Power BI. Okay, we're on the home stretch here. A uh, couple things, we're gonna kick off this job so it's actually running and streaming data and then create a Power BI dashboard report. Remember in our outputs here, if we go to outputs and click our Power BI, we d I kind of skimmed over this, I didn't walk through this screen in detail, but what you do when you create a new output that's a Power BI, it's going to prompt you for your Power BI ID and, you know, and help you have you authenticate. When you do that, you're going to point to a particular workspace where this data is going. So I have a, data, a workspace out there in Power BI called Curvy Event Data. So that's something you're going to need in order to set up a report in a minute. But first things first, let's go to overview and we need to start this analytics job. So far, all we did was sample it with the sample data. Let's click the start button and we'll just pick the default and click uh, go. And it'll probably take, you know, maybe 30 or 60 seconds to start the job. And then you'll get a notification up here that the job is started. Okay, we just got the notification that the streaming job started successfully. You can see here your job is running. So we're good. This thing is actually running. Uh, another thing you're going to want to make sure, which I kind of forgot about earlier, was uh, we need to make sure our job is running. So I'm, I'm starting 
this streaming job because it had stopped from before, make sure we're actually sending data to it. So now we have it, it's streaming data, it's just a test set of course, and we can now go to Power BI and see if we can report on this. So our .NET sample program is streaming data. Uh, we also know that our stream analytics job is running. Now let's go to Power BI. So I am in my Power BI uh, area here, and you can see that just in front of our eyes, that data set appeared. So that means that we are, and it's got the little, uh, the three yellow things up here telling us that that is a new data set. So that's kind of uh, a nice thing that we have seen get created uh, because we're streaming data to this Power BI data uh, workspace now. Okay, we have our data set. Then all we have to do is click the ellipsis here and say create report. And then you will be put into this normal Power BI uh, development pane here. And you can pick the make, the price, the time, and the type of chart you want to create. So there's our data right there. So back to our diagram for review. What we did today is we set up an Azure Event Hub namespace. Within the namespace, we created an Event Hub. And then we created an Azure Stream Analytics job. It had one input, which was the Event Hub, two outputs. It had the Power BI, and it also had the Azure SQL database for the output. So hope, hopefully that was a good uh, rundown to kind of uh, whet your appetite and uh, help you along the way with your streaming data needs. Thanks for watching. Hey, I totally forgot to talk about the SQL Server database table you need to have in place. So when you set up that output in Azure Stream Analytics to Azure SQL Database, you give it a table name. Well, the analytics job, the Stream Analytics job, isn't going to create that table automatically for you. So just make sure, like in this example we have here, uh, that you have a table out there with the columns that you expect. So if you're streaming make, price, and time, then make sure you have a table out there in your Azure SQL database that has those columns with the right data type. So that's something I kind of stubbed my toe on. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working, but just make sure you have the table and um, uh, the right columns in there. So I hope that helps.